All right, we're live and direct. We're back on the Heat Tank, the show with no official intro where we talk about marketing and branding and strategies. Today is a very special day because we had some guests come in from San Antonio. These two have been some very influential figures in the San Antonio, actually beyond San Antonio, but home base being San Antonio, the music scene, okay? You heard of Going South Magazine, dot com hashtag i push sa we have d major and sherry metal these are super ogs when it comes to music the local scene and what we're going to talk about today i'm gonna let them introduce themselves but what we're going to talk about is what they've seen over i mean it has to be at least 10 maybe even 15 years we'll find out exactly how many uh, the patterns that they've seen, the people that came up, the people that went down, what works, what doesn't work. They are deep in the mix when it comes to local music. And that's why they're here today. Because, you know, we're based out of Austin. We know Austin. But San Antonio, we got to know what that San Antonio vibe is. So I want to introduce to y'all D Major and Sherry Metal, okay, of the Urban Suite Radio Show, KSY. M F M ninety point one. Right. Hello. Hey. How are you? <laughs> yeah, we are doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How's life? Life it's is really going. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really nice. Really nice right now, actually. Yeah. 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 We're blessed just to be alive and kicking. True. So, and I'm glad to have y'all here because I know traffic is kind of a headache. Well, yeah, sure. but it's not horrible. And, and it's Austin. We're right here. True. I mean, I'm originally from L.A., so driving over into the valley or down to San Diego. Takes an hour in itself. Yeah, so I'm yep. used to it. Yeah, yeah. Same here. No, driving through Atlanta. Hell, even here, driving through Houston is kind of... So. <laughs> Take an hour and a half. Just, just yeah. Literally town. an hour yeah. and a half just to get to the other side of Houston. Seriously. Um. So, yes, I'm very glad that you two are both here because... I mean, I think everybody who has gone through San Antonio to either perform or has come out of San Antonio, as far as the, the urban scene goes, especially, mm -hmm. you guys are like the super OGs of the city when it comes to the local music scene. And I want to know first, how do y'all stay afloat? Because obviously things change. You know, it's, There's things that are digital now that it's no more CDs going, but maybe people still are pushing CDs. I, I don't know. So I really want to deep dive and, and figure out what is it about San Antonio that the music scene, how it just keeps on going and what pattern, what has changed. Okay, so first, intro, officially introduce yourselves, please, how okay. you got in the game, how you got to radio, and how you became a San Antonio, or shall I say a 210 music <laughs> OG. <laughs> well, um First off, uh, my name is D Major. I am the host of the Urban Sweet Radio Show at KSYM 90.1 FM in San Antonio on the campus of San Antonio College. I've always had an interest in radio, even going back when I was uh, in high school back uh, in Georgia. Uh, the opportunity presented itself when I came to San Antonio. I uh, took uh, classes for music business, and one of the very first classes I took was radio experience. Oh, wow. And uh, so from there... Uh, I pulled a few um, AAA shifts over at the station for a few months, and uh, the director at the time, the hip-hop music director, uh, saw I was interested. Uh, opportunity came. Uh, someone had to go to work, and then there was a slot available. He asked if I wanted to be a down. I said yes, and it's been like that ever since. Damn. Yeah. One thing led to another. Pretty much. That's interesting. <laughs> no, I, I like hearing people's stories because you're like, how the heck did you get into this stuff? And it could literally be one phone call, one email, one decision you made that totally changed your life. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that until mm -hmm. they really stop and think about that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like exactly. all of us here, we're literally one decision away from changing our life forever. True. That's really all so it is. So true. That's all it is. Sherry, talk to me. Wow. Um, I, I started my radio career in 1979 okay. on college radio. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I wanted to um, uh, get off campus in high school, yeah. and they were offering uh, ROC, Regional Occupation Media, classes. And I thought, well, okay, I've always loved media. My family's always been in media, so I'm going to go see what this is about because I, I am interested in it. Absolutely fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, went over to 
uh, it was the Pacific Coast campus of Long Beach City College, okay. where the, where the station was at. And so we did a little bit of time at their TV station, and then went right over to the radio station. And it was full immersion, absolute full immersion. I wasn't just a student there. Yeah. I was part of the whole system. And there was responsibility that came with it. And we were there sometimes for days. We wouldn't leave. Oh and it was um, it was an amazing time in radio. It's the thing, it's the stuff that you hear about, like the WKRP moments. Like okay. this was it. Um, I always stayed in media. Always loved it. When I came out to San Antonio, I had the opportunity to uh, become a staff writer at SA Urban Newspaper, which was okay. a monthly publication. Hit the streets uh, for many years. What, what and, year was this, by the way? I'm sorry. Oh, two thousand three. Four, okay. 2000, yeah, 2003, 2004, because I've been here 17 years. And from the day I hit ground here, it was f into full the force. music scene, full force. So I started writing for SA Urban Newspaper as a contributor, then a staff writer. Then I went up to, um, to uh, editor-in-chief. And then the paper closed. And uh, and so because I wanted to keep that momentum going, there was nobody else covering the the underground scene, the real hip hop scene mm -hmm. of San Antonio. So I started going South Magazine. Hmm. Yeah, I couldn't easy. I couldn't afford to put it on the streets like they did. But it's been online for 10 years now. Yeah. And the support is there every month. There is a new edition and the support is there. Yeah, well, well, what I call it is being ahead of your time, because let me tell you something. <laughs> Nowadays, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, the paperback type of magazines... It's out. They're not really as um, influential, we'll just say, as they used to be. I remember, uh, what was her name? Uh, Julia Beverly. O yeah. Ozone Magazine, Ozone Mag, Ozone Mag. And then now it's kind of like, and, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> right, and now Ozone Mag is kind of... I, I, I Really, I haven't seen anything that they do other than... Uh, working with South by yeah. every year, and that's okay because their work with South by is completely legendary. Exactly. And Julia is she still she's still pushing uh, the book and yeah yeah I remember having that. a massive career with that. So yep. kudos to her. She, she uh, if I'm not mistaken, she used to be. Did she work at Disneyland? I think I she was. Know. Yeah, I think hmm. she because she she was doing an interview one day. Interviewed her. Uh -huh. She used to be the person at Disneyland or Disney World. That literally drew, like, you'd walk up with your wife or your kids. She did the characters? Yeah, she did the characters. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then, of course, she got into the photography thing, and that's how everything, oh, and everyone wow. thought celebrities start, you know, paying her to just follow them around. Wow. So, but anyway, wow. everybody has an interesting story. Mm -hmm. um, but what is it about y'all two that really, first off, why you gravitated to urban music? And we would basically just say rap was probably, what, 90% of it, realistically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most stuff. For the most part, but but why is it that that genre of music that y'all just gravitated to and said, "Hey, this I, is what we you wanna... know, I was a punk rocker in the '70s. Okay. And so that was my music, and uh, listening to Rodney on the Rocks and Richard Blade and everybody, um, I just loved punk rock. But then when the first movement of hip hop came in, mm -hmm. and I heard Queen Latifah. It was over. <laughs> it was just over. Yeah. And I fell in love and went in that direction, and that's been it. And when I came here to San Antonio um, from Los Angeles, I saw that, one, the music wasn't as supported as it was back home. I see. And, well, there's uh, no major studios just here either, great. realistically. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. Very true. And there are some people trying to change that in the background right now. Mm -hmm. You know, there's... Shouts out People to making moves, Question yeah. and shouts out to Reservoir Music Group. Yeah, yeah. You know th that and that that we're a part of. I actually have a label, a record label, and uh, I don't go into that much because everybody has a record label, but I really do, yeah, yeah. and it's legit and and it's it's great working in that capacity, helping artists out over that way, mm -hmm. and then being able to incorporate it with his show. Yes, and get the artists their spin show them what the marketing over there show them why it's important for you to have your pro and get your music registered and get your Everything, copyright so yeah. you can make you know you're not in it just for the music you're in it to make money as well yeah 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 that's part of the legacy that you want to create yeah so yeah. yeah, so hip hop's always been it, especially when I got here. Yeah, yeah, I, I still got the first. It's funny because I had a show with some some young cats, mm -hmm. twenty twenty one years old, and I told them I said, like I've 
been in this. I remember I got Tupac's first cassette. Wow. Word. Still in my in well, in my storage now. Uh, Tupacalypse. Wow. I still got oh, yeah. that in cassette. And I remember uh, my buddy down the road, this was when we were kids. Well, not really kids. This is 93, 94. He gave me an NWA tape. I was a uh, uh, eighth grade. Summer of eighth grade, he gave me an NWA <laughs> tape. I go, what's this? He goes, it's what you, it's what you, and he's a white kid. Uh-huh. And he goes, it's what you don't want your parents uh, having, it's what you don't want your parents to know you're listening to. Yeah. Exactly. And then when I played it in the tape, I was like, oh, now I see why. <laughs> now I yeah. see, but yeah, tell, tell me how you, uh, Oh. Um, why hip hop is your life or you gravitated towards. Uh, like I said, pretty much uh, hip hop and I grew up together. We're okay. pretty much like the same age in mm-hmm. a way. Yeah. Um, I love hip hop before I knew what hip hop was. You know? I see. Uh, back in the day, I'm telling my age here, but you know, my dad would uh, uh, collect songs um, and things that he would like from like Melly Mel, from Master Flash. Oh yeah, and, Curtis Blow, uh, and Curtis Blow, Houdini, um, and all yeah. yeah. And growing up, just you no, know, uh, listen to a little bit of everything from being from Georgia. You know, yeah, listen to all of the Southern uh, heavy bass stuff, all the stuff from New York, mm-hmm. um, L.A. Just being immersed in the culture itself and all the different styles. And uh, it's carried on. I mean, I'm still that way now. I will listen to a little bit of everything. Yeah. Just get a sense of what is good, what I like, uh, what has the potential to uh, be uh, a true hit. True. And what we feel needs some work. Yeah. So. True, true. Yeah. Well, well now, now, let me ask you, because obviously we're, we're in this, we're in the season of this hit. I want y'all's opinion before we go into everything else. Okay. Okay. Takashi. Y'all's opinion on Takashi and then your opinion on Lil Nas X. Okay? Because Takashi literally blew up overnight, had his run. Obviously, bad decisions were made. They, or things caught up to him. And yeah. things happened, okay? But from a artist marketing standpoint, okay? And then tell me about Lil Nas X. Um, I'll say this personally. I've never really paid attention to the music. Okay. Now, we are familiar with the marketing. Okay. Marketing yeah. was on point. Yes. Marketing was on point. You cannot for Tekashi, mess with for that. Tekashi. For Takashi, okay. for sure. Uh, Shouts out to uh, everyone at MTA Booking who mm-hmm. pretty much those are our did. friends over there, and they're the ones who really pushed uh, pushed him. him in the good way. You know, okay. he was doing things that he wasn't supposed to do, and that's why he got caught up. And yep. and personally, with all that, I read the contract. Yeah. He were they some Hispanic guys here from Texas, right? Or no? No, no. Oh, this is something else. This is something else. MTA Booking is the booking agency that he wanted to sue because they had lined him up so many bookings and they paid him half up front. And they kept some of the money and then, or some shady stuff? Or, or it no. wasn't even it was. shady stuff. What happened was <laughs> he, he was paid for half of this. He was booked for 10 shows. He was paid for half of them okay. up front. He showed up to about three of those first 10. Okay. So he didn't have to fulfill his contract. He didn't fulfill his contract, so he didn't get the rest of the money because he blew it. That was his fault. He shouldn't have done it. He was being a little jerk about it. So, um, but the way that they marketed all the concerts, um, they even developed a brand new app behind it so that they could help market it even further which helped push them into a bigger spotlight because now their app you can um it's we don't want to get into that it's a whole thing but but google it (laughs) Google it, yeah but they they really elevated themselves they were already doing great Mm. because they book outside of the united states they work with a lot of artists outside of the united states they already have a great reputation yeah but Tasha and Tashia, they're amazing, and uh, they were. There was marketing in place for both these young men mm-hmm. every day for months and months and months before yeah. people even really knew who there was. Because back in college, I learned that marketing one hundred one, you your. You have to hear something, a name, a minimum of 25 times yep. before you even begin to think that it might be something good. Yeah, so yeah. imagine how many times, be, because, you know, people think that that Takashi is fantastic, whatever. But imagine how <laughs> much marketing had yeah, to yeah, go yeah. into oh, yeah. place 
to get that hype built and yeah. they did that and it was really great mm -hmm. and i love everything that lil nas x is doing mm -hmm. like his marketing is good it's clean it's friendly it's practical it's yeah. not over the top yeah because i think he has a better understanding of the money that you're actually spending all this mm -hmm. on, on, on all this marketing and mm -hmm. promo it's your money yeah, yeah, so yeah. you got to spend it. You got to be careful with it mm -hmm. because that that's your money. Actually, it comes yep. out of their pockets, but that's money that if you blow that money, that's money that's never going to come back in your pocket. Yeah. Do Do you think the Do you think the whole Lil Nas X vibe took off faster than the Takashi vibe? Because I, I personally like I look at because TikTok obviously the uh, Old Town Road was popping on TikTok for a while mm -hmm. before it hit mainstream. Yeah. Okay. But when I look at Takashi and Lil Nas X, I'm like, wait a second. I think Lil Nas X took off much faster than Takashi, yeah, yeah. and more opportunities bum rushed him. Mm -hmm. Also, because he's a cleaner. Well, I don't, I don't really know his he's whole character. He's friendlier. His, yeah, he's his friendlier. He's not as friendlier. aggressive, yeah. and he's a little bit more clean cut than yeah. Takashi. So I think that's yeah. why I think he appeals to the money more white faster. people yes. and more white women. Yeah, which is where the money, a lot of the money, comes from. Yeah, yeah. So he he was definitely a friendlier character, uh, um, you know, something you, you can say, oh, hey, you know, uh, uh, like you can play that on the morning shows. Yeah, you can't yeah. play 6 9 on the morning yeah, shows. Yeah, he just, in my opinion, just screams into a mic all, all every yeah, song. Yeah. Um, okay, now, now let me ask y'all, because obviously with my questions, I like to go straight into it, okay? Yes. Okay. San Antonio, Texas, and then we'll deep dive based on how <laughs> we, <laughs> we get through everything. <laughs> Who do y'all think have been the top two artists overall, okay, hip hop wise, that ever came out of San Antonio? And we can go back twenty years or ten years or five years, it doesn't matter. But the top two artists and why? Goodness. Well, I'm pretty you sure got, you guys goodness. know. Well, from goodness. what? It, 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 just just real quick, just, just real quick, hold on. And it could be that took off on a statewide level national level or that just really dominated the city and they took off but they literally are san antonio texas when it comes to that music but once again in y'all's opinion the top two okay um i i, I have one okay. i have one let's say richie branson okay yeah richie branson uh years ago uh red prodigy productions okay. did a lot of production producing for everybody everybody always loved his production and uh and he started doing a lot of producer work outside of san antonio and he was always into uh the nerdcore music and he got hooked up with mega ran mm -hmm. and then he uh he uh, one of his songs got picked up as the opening song for uh, Toonami. Okay. What what year was this? Oh. Like what? Not even that long ago. Not even that long Two, ago, no. Three or four years ago, maybe. Yeah. And huh. he's just doing more and more and more. He's getting placements like crazy. And I keep saying, you know, Richie Branson, Richie Branson. And everybody's like, who? But it's in a whole different realm. You know, they know when they hear the song, they're like, holy shit, that guy. Oh, but he's he guy. an artist or he's a yeah. producer? Or? He's, he's an artist. He's an MC, rapper, producer. He sings. He's a musician. Oh, he's okay. fantastic. But that's definitely one. And his marketing is on point. Um, and, and the money that he's made off of what he does. Yeah. Yeah, our friend drives a Lamborghini. Oh, my. Yeah, and he can afford to have it shipped when he goes to Puerto Rico Jesus. and then back to the U.S. when he comes back. And, you know, Wasn't Kylie riding around in a Lambo also? Or what's Kylie doing for a while with the... I he had an orange Lambo, I think. Remember that? I don't I know so. if that was his. Yeah, yeah, but he was per se. But he was riding around in it. But this is really Richie's. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> bought and paid for kind of thing. <laughs> bought his mom a house. The whole yeah, yeah. Like did that. Um, who do you have? Um, I'm pretty sure you would agree with question. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Don't you think so? The the legacy that he's uh, put together and the track record that he has had and uh, and what the he's big doing things now. He's about to do now. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. He was uh, with the label. I don't know if he still is out of Cinematic, right? Cinematic Cin Music Cinematic Group. Cinematic out of New York. I think yep. his home base. That's yep. right. That's right. Yep. And, and see, when, it, when I think of SA, 
I think of, and once again, because I was, you know, in SA 10 years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like now when I think of SA, I mean, I don't want to say now, but my perception of like SA who's popping with music was Question, yes. Fay Dog, yes. Jess Latino, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Jay Big had his run. Right. Uh, I know Juan Gotti had moved there for a while. I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but but he was, uh, for a while, he was in San Antonio. Uh, there's a, what's his name? Wor- wor- worldwide? Worldwide. 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 Oh, uh, Kyle Lee, of course. Yeah. Kyle Lee, of course. Um, and there's so many others, but I just have to stop and think. But once again, those might be like the... 05 to 2012 type era. Right. Now, I'm not really sure who's popping and why they're popping, to be honest with you. So that's yeah. what I'm kind of curious on. But who are, is your uh, your opinion, the top two ever out of San Antonio? Uh, ever? Yeah. yeah. Let's say question is definitely one yeah, of question them. Question one, sure. yeah, yeah. Um, and I would say uh, Mojo. <laughs> Absolutely. Mojo, that sounds familiar. Mojo has been around the world with their music. And actually, when I first came here 17 years ago, Question was managing Mojo, which is uh, Trey and Easy Lee. Easy Lee. Okay. And uh, both very accomplished. Both, uh, I think they're both teachers or both professors. Oh, my. Or, uh, Easy Lee's written books on, uh, with his poetry. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but they, they've literally been around the world performing. In one in one shape form or another um i think they might be working on some new stuff i don't know yeah we kind of mm-hmm. heard that we kind of heard a little bit a little something, something. something so that's so. gonna be real we're excited about that god that's gonna be amazing that's cool though that's cool and yeah we have a uh, like bavu here of course y'all know oh bavu. yeah oh, legendary. he uh i think he's a teacher professor yeah. or something mm-hmm. yes he is um and a lot of people don't know that they look at a lot of rappers and they just think rapper oh you know just some dude off the street Bavu got a degree, I think, from UT. Mm-hmm. Bavu, yeah. I believe Bavu has multiple degrees. Multiple degrees, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then in San Antonio, we have uh, Marco Antonio Cervantes, Mex- Next step, step. Mexican step-grandfather, okay. who mm-hmm. is not just a rapper MC. He's, he's a professor of oh black-brown culture and yeah. teaches these classes that inspire hundreds. Jesus. And it's amazing. And, it's ama- and the music that he writes... It is the kind of music that that um, is thought provoking. It really makes you stand up and want to do something for your culture. It's ah, I see. beautiful. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask y'all. So, why do things catch on? Okay. In general, why do things catch on longevity wise? Because obviously, you guys have seen people come into the the radio station, yeah. go out the radio station, and nothing ever goes anywhere. But what is it about the ones that catch on or just stay on? Persistence. And why? And why? Yeah, definitely persistence. persistence. The consistency of it. Um, quality? You, you think the, has something to do with oh, it or not really? Goodness, yes. The okay. quality has to be there. Um, I And I keep trying to explain this to some of the artists that over the years that that we've been working with helping talking to trying to mentor and some of them elevate excessively and do beautifully and they do everything we tell them to do and mm. they get the rewards for it yeah, and yeah. then there are some that are still stagnant stagnant and their sound is still the same mm. and it's terrible and it it wasn't good then and it's definitely (laughs) not good now and you try to tell them that and say well what's wrong with it what's wrong with it and i give them a list yeah 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 fix this oh you're just hating no i'm trying to get your music to radio standards so we can broadcast it and make you money yeah you know know, it's funny you say that (laughs) speaking of essay i remember i mean this had to been 2008, 2009, mm-hmm. uh, Tino Cochino. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. He was on, was it Power? Yeah. Power, Power yes. 106. That's yeah. my boy. He was on Power That's 106. My boy. And I went to the station to go see him. And we actually did a video. I need to post it one day because it was a video from at least 10 years ago. Oh, gosh, yes. He was, tw- I don't know how old he is now, but he was like 21, 22 okay. at wow. the time. So anyway, he was a baby, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But he knew how to do his job, though. He's really good. Damn right. Um, and we were talking <laughs> about just that how artists will see him at a club where they'll come to the station, they'll give him a disc with just a permanent marker written yes. on it. No case, oh. no, like literally. No song list. 
No nothing. Song was wow. nothing. Like it literally just came out of the computer, just got burned on the computer, and they literally handed it to him. And and they write their email address so quick that you can't see really what it is. Oh, well, so if it was yeah. good, you can't even contact them. Yeah. And, and it's just interesting to hear. I mean, it's the same thing for you guys. Mm-hmm. Same thing for him. Yeah. And obviously, imagine what all these labels are going through and these other radio stations. Exactly. And it's like, and that's why people like you, let me put it like this. This is why people like you guys are very, not just influential, but very valuable yeah. in the music community because you guys can look at an artist and say, okay, let's say you have five minutes in front of a radio exec or five minutes in front of a DJ or two minutes in front of, what are you going to do? What are you going to show them? Who are you trying to target? What do you want them to do? And how are you going to get them to do it? Or how are you going to present it to them? Right. And when they don't have a game plan or some trash ass game plan, it's like, right. this is what it's you like, got to change. We got to help them rewrite their scripts. Like you can only say, hey man, hold up so many times. Yeah. And those aren't the things you want to say when you're sitting in front of a business executive. Yeah. They want to know um, how many units have you sold? What your numbers are on social media, yeah. you know, uh, Le- your legit what your numbers, feedback your legit is, numbers. you Thank know, you. have have the radio stations had you in for interviews? What's your local support like? Um, even they want to know sometimes like what your Reverb Nation is because Reverb Nation, although a lot of artists poo poo it, they really show good numbers. Mm, if I you see. if you keep your your movement organic. That sounded bad. Uh, then you can see your actually you can see your numbers and you can get really good feedback on yourself. And if you list your uh, list where you're performing at, Reverb Nation hits you back the next day and says, "Hey, did you do that performance? What songs did you sing? Okay, cool." And they go and report it for you, uh, so you I can see. get your pennies. So I love Reverb Nation. That's yeah, my yeah. friend. And that that came out in was it early two thousands. Yeah. It, was that Reverb Nation? Yeah, like early two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a fantastic resource. Yeah, yeah. not used enough. Yeah, because I remember it in early t- no mid two thousands and into oh eight oh nine two thousand ten back when no, when I was in the mix or whatever. That's when I remember it was super duper popular. Uh, nowadays, once again, if it's valuable to people, they need to take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. But I think now the whole sound SoundCloud kind of. Yeah, SoundCloud's real nice. Um, yeah. I, I love being able to go there and stream an artist's music real easy there. Um, iTunes, I don't have it on my computer, so going there it sometimes is a little fumbly for me personally. Okay. Um, but I love I SoundCloud. I think they're doing away with I iTunes, speaking of. stream it. Yeah, I think they just ended it like a week or two ago. Wow. Actually. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, so our top five performing formats have changed. Now we got to go reformulate speed, that. Yeah, speed. Yeah. Just revamp, this is revamped Apple Music, but iTunes okay. itself is kind of dead. Okay, yeah, and that's something that the artist should always look at is the top five performing websites that spin your music because that's really what you want to focus on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get your money. Yeah, and these platforms, they just change so fast. I mean, who would have thought that Instagram, remember back when Instagram was 15-second videos, right. and then they're like, oh, you can do one-minute videos now. Hey, those one-minute videos can get you that <laughs> penny. Yes, and I already knew. I was like, man, I already know what's going to happen. Rappers are going to put one-minute videos, but it's a good thing as long as it's quality. But quality is also yeah. subjective to whoever's listening. Right, exactly. And so luckily on that platform, you can choose who you want to pop up on your timeline. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that that's really good. And I always tell artists that if you're going to send us a drop, okay, put your music behind it. Mm. You, you know, uh, by the way, you know Kanye used to do that? Because obviously y'all know Kanye was mm. a producer before he was a rapper. Right. I was, this is, you know, years ago, I was listening to an interview, uh, uh, Kanye, I forget who was interviewing him, and he said that when he would shop his beats around, he would put his raps on his beats, and they're like, no, 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 we, we don't want the, you know, yeah, uh, just, we just want the beat. Oh, that's great. But he was trying to like, I don't want to say weasel his way in, but he was trying to use that as his way to get on the track with so-and-so. Mm-hmm. But Absolutely. Eventually, yeah, and eventually it paid off. Some people weren't really fond of his rap, some liked it, and that's how he basically took off, got hooked up with Jay-Z, and, and obviously and one dame, really, and then yeah. Jay-Z and the rest <laughs> is history. So yeah, But yeah, right. it was very, very interesting, but... So what is, let me ask you a question, okay? Mm-hmm. Marketing is a battle of perceptions. 
Yeah. That's what a lot of people don't realize. It's really a battle of perceptions, okay? A perception from the public and a perception of yourself. Now, let me ask y'all, what is the perception of music in San Antonio when it comes to hip-hop? Is it the gangsta kind of cholo military drive on a Sunday type of rap? Is it straight hip-hop bars, lyrics? Is it some street gangsta stuff like y'all's per when you think of san antonio music right now what do you guys think and then what do you think the rest of the state thinks hmm. Hmm. that's interesting <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that's interesting that's super loaded i i see three three um three entities okay. within san antonio um i see the the west side the hispanics the the gangster Mexican rap you yeah. know the Juan Gotti Jess Latino mm -hmm. and all them Cree uh, Cree Is electric still and all Jay Big still around okay. I don't know if he's working but I know he's still around yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, Gotti is actually living in Houston still doing tattoos, tattoos and yeah, still yeah, going right. all over um, but but there's the West Side music there's the Hardcore hip hop boom bap scene. Okay. And then there is the rap scene. Okay. Uh, the West Side Mexican scene. They got their money. They're making their money. They got their yeah, yeah. stores. They're pushing it out of the trunk. Everything's good. The hip hop scene. We're so solidified. Mm -hmm. We are. We are standing so strong. Uh, and the rap scene is still needing more momentum. More, it see. still need more work. Who, who do you think is leading that right now? The rap scene. Yoda. Okay. Yoda, Little Yoda. Oh my God, Yoda. Yeah. Uh, IQ. Yoda. IQ. Uh, the latest release, Me Twist. That's a solid. Oh, solid. Who, who was it? Solid. E Twist. E Twist. T W I S S E Twist, and we were just at his release party also, which was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. fabulous. Um, it was like a Hollywood production. It was great. Hmm. Uh, shouts out to new new Illuminati. Um, so those guys, Mitch James. Oh God, yeah, Mitch, Mitch James and company. You talk about longevity and, and growth and growth, changing with the times, recreating his sound to really make it part of part of what's going on with uh, uh, the corporate movement. You I know, see. the okay. Takeshi Six Nines and all those. Yeah. But keeping keeping it a really great San Antonio vibey sound, and his quality is always outstanding. I see. Mm -hmm. um, Video and audio, obviously. Videos yes. are beautifully done. Uh, Greg Wallace is d doing a lot of amazing videography work. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, what do you think the city of Austin looks at San Antonio as? Like when Austin says San Antonio rap, what would mm. you guys think? That's a good question. Because I'm going to tell you like a good example. Like when, you know, we think of, well, obviously I'm a little bit older now, but... Thinking of Houston rap, we would only think of ESG, Slim Thug, Bun B, I'ma come down, I'ma come through, right. blah, 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 right? But mm -hmm. that was the era that was popping, okay? Well, let me, let me rephrase Exactly, it. It, it was, it, it was it popping. Was, it, it was how, it was the phrases and the terms and the raps that if we heard something, if we heard two words in a rap, we automatically knew what city it came from. One of the things about Austin, and this is dating back 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. people would tell me, Austin has no distinct sound, okay? Now, yeah. now but, but keep this in mind, though. You don't necessarily have to be a, have a distinct sound because, of course, we can look at the Miami Bays. We could look at the New York style. We could look at the Atlanta. We could mm -hmm. look at the hyphy type of West Coast, whatever. Exactly. They do have distinct sounds, but here's the thing. What if you are a very um, talented artist that doesn't want to rap like Mac Dre did in the Bay? You don't want to sound like E-40. You don't want to say your words certain ways. Or you don't want to rap with, I'm going to come down, I'm going to come through, like the Houston Cats did. But let's say you lived in Houston. You know, and that's why I always looked at Austin personally like, we don't got a distinct sound, but it gives people from so many different genres an opportunity to create a name for themselves here and dominate that specific sound. Mm hmm and push it all over the country because if you just right. get labeled as Paul Wall, oh, you're just another rapper from Houston with a gold grill. I mean, a diamond grill. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying. But see, so yeah, I just you know the question is, how do you guys think Austin sees San Antonio? 
It's 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 really a mixed bag because I'm I'm in a few different Austin uh, groups on Facebook. Yes. And I've watched the controversy and Austin, a lot of the Austin artists feel that they're unsupported and that there from? isn't a sound that from their own people and oh, okay. that they're not really supported. And San Antonio artists were saying that for a long time too, that they mm-hmm. didn't feel they were supported. So it's like the same things our artists were saying, Austin artists were saying. Yep. And so we started working even harder, putting more of their music on air. <laughs> but Austin, yeah, Austin doesn't have a sound. It has so many sounds. Yes. It's a melting pot. It's a true melting pot. And San Antonio longs to be that. I see. And and we want Austin to feel good about what they are. We want the artists, all of the artists, to feel good about what they're doing. Austin doesn't have to have a sound because it's such a melting pot. It's such a welcoming true. community. And that's what we all love about it. And I think when they look at us, I don't know if they see more cohesiveness um, but San well, just Antonio as much does diversity. have a sound, and a lot of the artists here. I, I for the first ten years I was here, yeah. everybody the San Antonio artists say we don't have a sound, we don't have a sound. You do, you very yeah. much do have a sound. They just got to bump their sound to the rest of the state or country, yeah. and they can become the sound. I had some producers here on the show, and I was telling them, you know, we're talking about, you know, obviously you guys are a little bit older than me, but we understand how. Every couple of years, okay, Miami Bass was popping. Mm-hmm. The New York uh, uh, DOS effects in the it's trenches type of movement. whatever. Then it was Atlanta. Then it was the West Coast. Then it was this. And it was this. So we see it. But like nowadays, especially, things happen so fast, you can literally create a new sound and it'll just take off for you if Absolutely. you know how to market it right, though. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it, it has to be marketed black, right. White. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, look at these females that rock. Speaking of, there was a female that y'all were with uh, not too long ago from, uh, was she from L.A.? Hispanic girl, I believe. Or? Oh, Reverie. The, Reverie. Uh, the, yeah. 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 Because kind of I saw the pictures, but what exactly does she do? Is it she rap or? Reverie is an MC. Okay. Uh, and, and she's just amazing. Okay. And, you know, uh, the group that she with, they felt as, as uh, Hispanic females in Los Angeles in hip hop that they were unsupported. So they took it <laughs> upon themselves. You know, this group, they, they, they flipped whatever they had to and they made their money and they put their money back into them oh and not into $300 shoes. They yes. put it into <laughs> videos. They put it into great, great marketing, great music, great production. Shouts out to Loudon. You know, like I, all their music is amazing. And uh, Reverie even says in one of her videos that she's going to take it on the road, uh, throw her own shows and do her own videos, quote, you know, yeah. and that's what she did. And now that whole crew is around the world. That's cool. Around the world doing making videos in Germany and Copa, you know, like yeah. all over the place. And they're having a great time and they're they're um they're pushing positivity through yeah. it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the pictures. I said there's there's something special about this girl cuz I looked at the picture yeah. in the video. I didn't really deep dive into everything she was doing, but I was like mm-hmm. She's doing things slightly different than the typical uh, female yeah. artist. Um, now, let me ask you. So here in Austin, we have what I call city ambassadors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, obviously, my boy Lil J. Right. He, he's in and out of the city. but Hella Yella. Yeah, yeah. Got the key. He, he, hella Yella as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but when I think, in my opinion, when I think of ambassadors of the city of Austin of music. Do you think Lil J? Lil J definite. is probably the first one because... He can be anywhere in the country because he comes and goes. He does his thing, but he's constantly like Austin, 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 yeah. Austin. Who in San Antonio would be probably the... Because once again, so with branding, check this out. The goal of branding is obviously to become the first or the only one that comes to mind when that product or right. service is Correct. thought of. So city ambassador, okay, other than y'all two, because I know you can do, no, no, I'm serious, because y'all two literally are, okay, mm-hmm. literally are ambassadors for the music scene in San Antonio, mm-hmm. at least hip hop, at least. Okay? Absolutely. But and as we far love as, it. as far some, as the local personalities, 
who would be the next go-to mm. person if I needed to know everything about mu- uh, hip-hop music in San Antonio, other than y'all two? One of the most popular would would be Kyle Lee, of okay. course. Of course. Um, New Illuminati, J-Boy, J-Boy. And, and his crew, okay. because they stay in the faces of everybody. They're always looking for... Uh, what's hot? What's you know? What's going on? Because yeah, um, they whether you're want a newcomer it. or been doing it for a they've while, they've been around. They've been doing it. J Boy, if you remember Ice J J Fish, remember that phenomenon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, was he the one that kind of rapped kind of weird? J Boy, like yeah, yeah, that little weird black kid. Okay, yeah, not Fifty Good. Tyson, y'all. No, 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 the other one. He, he man, <laughs> yeah, yes. talent is so. It's so, yeah. <laughs> we'll just say his confidence so, level was very high. But J Boy right. was the one who put him worldwide. J Boy really? is the one responsible for all his marketing. Yeah. So shout huh. out to J Boy. Ah! Hold on. So so Ice J J Fit or whatever his name is. Ice J J Fit. Is he from San Antonio? No. no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, okay. no. He was reaching out on social media like you know I want help. I want help. I want people to push me. I'm so good and all this. Yeah. And J Boy looked at that and said. I can make money off this, <laughs> you know. And, so, you, you know and he, he saw the potential. He really saw the potential, and he went for it. Man, it and now the kids worldwide. Hey, you know what's funny? You say that, so y'all know the, the what's his name, the wide neck, long neck. There's a black dude with the big wide. Oh neck, yeah, 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 and then yeah, the little yeah, wide yeah, neck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So I was looking because because I'm. A, they're so funny. Yeah, yeah. So, so oh, to God. me, to me, that stuff is like gimmicky type of yeah. whatever, mm-hmm. exploiting people the way I look at it. But if if they're every if everyone's cool with yeah, it, yeah. make it happen. Okay? Yeah, 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 exactly. But I looked at who's managing, who's pushing these two, and the same dude that was pushed. This is maybe six months ago. Um, Supreme Patty, you know, who Supreme Patty is no. the white kid that has a Supreme headband all the time. Okay, with I a think bunch I, of pimples, and I think he I kind think of rocks, but does okay. a bunch of dumb videos. He'll go to yeah. Dunkin' Donuts smoking weed or whatever. Wow. Anyways, so that guy, I can't remember what his name, but he was like maybe 21, 22 years old. Mm-hmm. He's managing all three, and then another one, too. <gasps> oh, dang. And I was like, this is like the master exploiter. Oh, so I wow. Managed it. Yeah, yeah. But it was... It was really interesting, but but yeah, I didn't know that a guy from San Antonio, yeah, because that guy Ice JJ Fish, whatever, got on World Star and got yeah, that's yep. crazy. Yeah, that was J Boy. That's that crazy, J Boy. No, okay, now let me ask you, what could we have? Maybe about ten more minutes. Okay. What do you guys think have been San Antonio artists? Okay, mm. the top accomplishments. I'm mm. talking about it could be a worldwide recognition, national recognition, that you were like. Yes, somebody from San Antonio pulled that off. What do you think it could be or what it was? Definitely for me, when when Mojo caught the attention of uh, Matthew Knowles and had their first album reworked and released on Music World. Yep. Same. My sister used to work for Music World. Really? Yep, Music World Entertainment. Oh, and wow. J- just real quick, it's funny you say that. So this was 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was in the uh, House of Darion? Yeah. Yes. So House of Darion was an event. Well, I don't know if it still is an event venue mm-hmm. in Houston. Okay. Yeah. And it used to be where Destiny's Child is. I think it was in the center of Gallery. I can't remember. Uh, anyways, it was a real nice two story place. It was a Latin Grammys after party that I was actually taping. Mm-hmm. Okay, this was years ago. Matthew Knowles, accountant, he's a Hispanic well, at the time, mm-hmm. a Hispanic guy, put the party together. Okay. Well, my sister was in, well, technically interning for Music World when she was living in Houston. Okay, wow. so I remember Matthew Knowles rolled up in the. I think it was a Rolls, I believe. I remember wow. right. He rolled up just to see how everything was going. But yeah, she told me all kinds of story. I mean, good, li- positive stories. We'll yeah. Say, mm-hmm. About Matthew and the family, and it was really cool. But, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead, and continue. That was just a quick little. No, I'm saying it, it, it was amazing. In fact, uh, like you, I had a chance to uh, visit the whole uh, compound for Music World. Okay. Uh, back when you know, I originally uh, was a student at SAC and part of the whole uh, Grammy U uh, experience, yeah. being a student. So yeah, I was able to tour the uh, Music World uh, campus, a campus, the uh, House of Darion, their uh, recording studio. 
dance studio, uh, practice stage, mm-hmm. you know, the event they held that night, uh, Jay Prince came through. You can see Tino Knowles on the second floor. Yeah, Matthew, um, he owns a lot of catalogs, I believe. Yeah. And outside of outside of pop music, too. Yeah, yeah right? you'll be amazed at some yeah. of the rock and country that, that's, exactly. that's part of the label. It's, it's amazing. Smart move. Yeah. Yep. All of this from working at, uh, I think, which... Uh, I think it was Xerox. Um, he was originally working there, and the Something. money he yeah the money from sales he made there he used to uh, start the label. Pumping to the girls, right? Yeah, huh? yeah. And, and who who do you think? Um, I I you know the the two names that that come to me would you know of course Richie Branson because that that's massive and yeah. then 155 155 are the Grammy award winners at San Antonio who wrote the hook for blame it on the alcohol oh okay so and the, and some of them are still working they're still behind the scenes still working mm-hmm. um still part of the Grammys yeah and supporting hip hop in that way yeah so so who are the top producers as far as worldwide recognition or national Ooh. recognition that you guys know are, are doing stuff, and what are they doing differently than everybody else? Coming out of San Antonio. Out of San Antonio. Ruler Y and Worldwide. Definitely those two. Yeah. Ruler has a uh, amazing beat maker. Um, he's, he's done work with a. Uh, uh, the one track that uh, he did with the uh, DOS from here and uh, Split Gems out of New York. Oh yeah, amazing really? song, amazing song. Um, shouts out to DOS, yeah. one of Austin's finest. And, yeah, and his piece of business. Yeah, <laughs> you got a piece of business too? yeah, yes. oh, the guy. He's oh, the slice familiar. pizza. If you look on Instagram, the slice. That's DOS. Yeah. Oh, that pizza okay. business, and he, he used to run with six and all them, didn't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes out of that whole crew, and he's just amazing. Um, and yeah, worldwide too. He's worked with uh, a huge catalog of people. Um, my favorite right now is. Um, Let me guess, Zamala. Zamala, yeah, it was Aaron, Aaron Anderson, Evan. Evan Anderson, Zamala. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's the difference in Zamala and everybody else? Is it a male or female? Or is it a it's a male. male. It's a male. Zamala is. He's a male. He's a male. Sounds like a dog. It's a male. <laughs> <laughs> it's a male dog. Good boy. Um, the 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 quality of the production I there. See. You don't hear anything wrong when you listen to it. It's the mastering perfect. and engineering is just. It, it's it's. Perfect. It's like putting on the Trill album, oh. and you know you're having that glorious perfection from beginning to end in all facets of the artistry huh. on this. Zamala is this, and he's Hispanic he's, guy, white guy, yeah, he's yeah. Sp- Hispanic. Zamala, Zamala, oh. Evan Anderson, Evan Anderson, y- young young guy. Mm-hmm. I would say mm-hmm. 30s. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, I'm 40 now, so everyone's <laughs> younger. Well, I'm 50 something, so y'all are. <laughs> so everybody's, y'all are younger, babies. everybody's younger. Everybody's younger. Everybody's younger. No, but they're they're fantastic, and there there's there's some of our guys that go back many many years. Like if we go back to the beginning, yes. there's the PKO, like you mentioned, NWA. Well, we had an NWA in San Antonio, but they were called PKO. Really? Pounds, keys, ounces, <laughs> well, and in damn. fact, Nino. Uh, the the lead of PKO has has come back to life, recreated himself. Uh, just did a short little tour in Japan and here and oh there, my. and he's back. And everybody's still bumping the PKO music, and they love it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so and he he's the fantastic. O- the, the OGs are back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Literally. The literally. OGs are back. Damn. Well, we're about to wrap it up. Oh, this yeah. is really interesting talk because I love to hear more about, you know, because I love music. I grew up obviously on music and I had my run doing my things. But now let me ask you because we've got maybe, you know, three, four or five minutes. Advice that you guys give to artists that whether you want to start rapping tomorrow or whether you're already in the mix and you're like, how come I'm getting no traction? Because everybody complains and everybody blames everybody else. Exactly. That's one thing that I've seen 
all the time. If, if the video, you, you shoot a video, you put it on YouTube, I have, I've heard people, cr- not crying, but complaining that the video guy didn't do a good job. But it's like, dude, you're the one that holds the account to YouTube. You're the one that can pay for the promotion. You got the URL to push. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not the video that you approved. Maybe it's you not marketing it. But anyways, what final thoughts, final words of wisdom do you guys have for the locals? Because you guys have been, what, 15 years now, is it? Yeah, 17 years for me and about 20 years for D Major. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are the the final, the closing right now? Hmm? What do you got? What do I have? Yeah. Don't waste your time. Okay. Don't waste a second of your time. Get with uh, get with a PRO, get with ASCAP or BMI, find out what you are, and then you can go with either ASCAP or BMI. Mm-hmm. Find out about how to copyright your music and do it. Find out, you know, look on YouTube for all this. It's like some of the best uh, mentoring you can get aside from sitting down with us. And we do sit down with artists and mentor them in person. Um we we tell artists get your music registered get a copy written before it's sent to us make sure all the production is on point and when you're marketing depending on if they're more rap or if they're more hip-hop we'll suggest like if you're more hip-hop go check out vanya Okay. Or I still love her dot de over in Germany. She's the biggest hip hop blogger out there. Mm-hmm. You want her attention, like you want some good local attention. TJ's DJs, yeah. you know, shouts out to TJ doing his thing with the free music review. And mm-hmm. these are things that don't cost an arm and a leg. And if for fuck's sake you can afford a pair of Jordans, yeah. you can afford some damn good marketing. Yeah. Like seriously, for two hundred dollars. I could, I could do amazing things for an artist, yep. but they don't want to do that. Girlfriends say, oh, well, I bought him that outfit. Why the fuck for? <laughs> Return Why? it and pay for Instagram ads. Take it back. Why are you modeling Fashion Nova? Yeah. Get rid of that crap. Bring me your money. Let's go over here. We've yeah. got the biggest publicist in Texas here in San Antonio, yeah. and she's willing to work. You know, she handles... Um, Zero and George Clinton and and she she works with us oh to help the artists. Yeah, yeah. So we get some really good prices, but they want to be cheap. They don't want to do it. Damn. Mr. D Major. Basically, for me, um, if you're serious about the craft, you will do what you need to do to improve it. Yes. You'll be open to criticism and you'll be open to making sure that you take care of business and put money into yourself. Mm-hmm. If you just want to stay local and just do little showcases here and want to want yeah, and want to <laughs> be you. Oh. and want to be uh, famous on Facebook, <laughs> that's one thing. But if you want to take yourself serious and want to make sure that you uh, have an audience not only in the city but outside the city, you will do the work that's needed. Yeah. Period. And, yeah, and don't do Boss Bar events. I think don't do that. Well, stuff. was I was I with you at Boss Bar one time when the feds came and they I think raided I was, uh, and they shut it down and they turned off the the music and shut like down everything midnight and yeah. they had they had police dogs in there sniffing people like we were trapped inside this bar and I was like this was what, maybe ten years ago yeah and I, I got it on video I think too oh. and the bartender got up and she goes all right we're shutting down blah 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 it was me I was with Cool Whip okay it, yeah I me, was there cool Whip, yeah you might have been I think you were there I was back by the pool tables because yeah, I was it like was crazy screw this <laughs> and they literally <laughs> shut down the whole bar but anyway it was an interesting thing but but no I'm glad you guys could come on the show it means a thank lot thank you so um, much because there are locals that will hear this. And we'll say, oh, hold on, what name did they say? What name did they say? Because these are people that you guys actually do business with. You have relationships with these people. Yeah. But people not just here in Austin, but on the YouTube, Internet world, need to say the name that he mentioned or that she mentioned, I need to look into connecting with that person. Right. Because that's one of the popping people in San Antonio and such. And that's how you build relationships. Uh, good, uh, was it Travis Scott from Houston? Yeah, mm-hmm. Travis Scott doing wonderful I, things. I mean, imagine that. A dude from Houston with totally different sound than the come down, come up. Yeah. Broke through the barriers of the Houston shell of 
Perception, which was a one type of rap, and he literally took off one worldwide. Exactly. Oh, and one quick thing, you know, one of the best tips that I got from, uh, I sent out Avar the Star to go interview Hurricane Chris like 10, 11, 12 oh, years ago yeah, back yeah, in the day, remember, okay? Yeah, yeah. Hurricane Chris said the best thing he ever did, or really? what he did, he, he would get uh, a bunch of backpacks, and he would fill those backpacks up with stickers and flyers and CDs, and so he'd have like 20 backpacks in his trunk, and he'd go, he would go outside of his city, outside of his yeah, state, yeah. and go from city to city to city, grab a backpack, go out, and just start handing out the music. Even boom, if boom, nobody boom. knew who he was, it didn't matter. They, it didn't matter. And yeah. he did that, and that is what really helped launch him. That's cool. Heck yeah. yeah that's coming and out. artists don't do that enough anymore. The hand-to-hand yeah. -hand combat, that real guerrilla marketing. Coming outside of the box and think of a that. particular um, marketing tool or things like that. Yeah. Um, just do things people won't expect. Yeah. To get your name yeah, out there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, think yeah. really outside the box. Yeah, you, you get a, you get different results when you do different actions. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I told this to business owners all the time well speaking of time we're out of time d major sherry metal thank you going so south magazine.com yes make sure you look them up obviously we got all the connects on the screen you can check them out i appreciate y'all y'all make sure to go check out other episodes of the heat tank because you will learn a lot a like lot. share subscribe whatever you got to do right yes thank you the heat Boom. tank is Reason. it